This is Robin Bremer. .net is my website. And today I want to share with you and talk to you about angels. First of all, I'm excited because I found my perfect recording studio and that is in my car, whether I'm driving or sitting here. My cats can't climb on my lap and press my buttons. My dog can't, dogs can't bark super loud and come in the room. So I am excited to be able to find my perfect studio right here in my car. So today I want to share with you about angels and uh, basically I've written several books, one book about angels and uh, it's called uh, 80 Facts About Angels and it's recently been updated and it has some information about Kat Kerr and some questions that she answered about um, angels that she's seen in heaven. She allowed me to do an interview for her, put it on my blog and put it in my book. So she's been to heaven thousands of times. She has a rich heritage of a very close relationship with the Lord and the mission that God gave her, she didn't decide herself, is <clears throat> that he takes her to heaven and shows about heaven. So um, that's in one of my books. But anyway, what I want to share is about angels. And I also want to share about the supernatural and your imagination. I've kind of discovered a secret or a key to the supernatural. To this, The supernatural, first of all, belongs to Christians. The supernatural, we are a spirit, we live in a body, and we have a soul. And um, our imagination is, our, is the bridge to the supernatural realm. Uh, being a spirit, a spirit belongs in the supernatural realm. So the supernatural should be just as natural to us as the, you know, touch me physical realm is. And it's not because a lot of Christians are afraid of the supernatural or the spirit realm because the devil has managed to put onto Hollywood these movies about demonic and all this scary, horrible stuff and nobody can beat them and they throw people against the wall and all that stuff. So Christians have become afraid of the supernatural, thinking that the supernatural is of the occult or a demonic. And the truth is... God created the world from the supernatural. Everything spiritual was created by speaking words, which are supernatural. So the whole world, the, the, the supernatural spirit realm is the parent realm of the physical realm. Everything in this physical realm that you can touch was created by the spirit realm. The spirit realm was here first. So Having said that, I go on rabbit trails and I forget where I'm going. But um, the supernatural belongs to Christians. And our imagination is the key to that. When we are children, children and animals see into the supernatural. They see angels. They see demons. They see warfare. They see... Hi, Kathy. Hi, Sharon. Shannon. Sorry. Um, they see into the spirit realm, baby see into the spirit realm. I remember when my, my granddaughter was born, uh, she just started looking in one direction and laughing and laughing and laughing. And my daughter said, she just has gas. No, she doesn't. She saw an angel. An angel was probably tickling her. Uh, and she was laughing and or making faces and she was laughing in response to that. So the spirit realm is very, very natural. Uh, we we should be experiencing the supernatural. We should experience be experiencing the, the spirit realm. It was created for us. We are a spirit being. And it should become just as natural um, to... Hi, everybody. <laughs> it should just, it'd be just as natural to see into the spirit realm, hear, taste, smell, and feel in the spirit realm as it is in the physical realm. And God gave man dominion on the earth because it's a physical earth. So he gave us a physical body. And he said physical bodies have authority let me close this looks like sorry <laughs> um physical bodies need to touch physical substance and our earth is physical so he gave us a physical body and gave us dominion over all the physical uh, over all the worth all over everything spiritually and physically but in order to have dominion on this earth you have to have a physical body that's why he had it come through jesus and so on so the spirit realm created the physical realm the physical realm uh, is obvious to everybody. But the spirit realm, you have to use your imagination. You have to begin to trust your imagination. Little kids and babies have imaginary playmates. I really don't think they're imaginary playmates. I really think that some of those imaginary playmates are angels. <clears throat> and at the time of conception, angels are assigned to us, more than one. And we have authority and dominion over angels. A lot of people, when they pray, they say things like... Um, if it be your will or 
please, Father, do this. But we're supposed to speak the words and the words tell the angels what to do. It's called commanding prayer. You're just like a spiritual policeman and you're directing the angels to do what the word says. But they can't do it unless you release them, unless you speak it. And I got off on another tangent there. Let's see, where was I going? Um, okay, so the imagination. Oh, hi, Jamie. Hi, Bill. <laughs> hi, John. So the imagination is our key to the spirit realm, to the supernatural realm. And you reap what you sow. I discovered that the more I research something, study something in the Word of God and want to know about it, the more I know about it. For example, I wanted to know about angels. So I started reading everything I could on angels. I started studying the Word of God and angels, asking for supernatural knowledge and <clears throat> began to tune in my spirit being. Our spirit body looks just like our physical body. In the spirit, you see, hear, taste, smell, and feel. But it's spiritual. And in heaven, it's a whole spiritual world. Um, this is not, this is just the, the clothing that we have on right now. Our physical body is our clothing for a spiritual body so that we can touch the spiritual world. But when your spiritual body le leaves your, your physical body becomes dead, your spiritual body goes somewhere else. It either goes to hell or it goes to heaven. It depends on if you receive that free gift of Jesus paying all the price for our sin because none of us are perfect. We were born sinners. Anyway, long story. Um, so when we go to heaven, um, we live a life there and there are, it's a whole spiritual world because this world is a copy of heaven. Uh, it's, it's a physical copy of a spiritual heaven. Uh, they have animals in heaven. They have, you know, the people go to heaven. They have roads in heaven. They have all kinds of stuff in heaven because we're a copy of that. So to see angels, to see into the spirit realm and to see the supernatural, you have to begin to ask God to open your spiritual eyes. There is a particular scripture that says that to open uh, my spiritual eyes so that I can uh, see uh, the heart of my understanding. God often talks and says your heart when he talks about your spirit, your heart of your understanding, because you are a spirit being and, and your spirit is perfect, but your body and soul needs renewing and learning the word. So the more you focus on angels, the more you focus on um, the supernatural realm, the spirit realm, the more you will begin to experience it. And there's a couple experiences I want to share with you. Um, one is when I didn't really know much about uh, my power to deliver demons, I tried to deliver a Hawaiian man named Kalani from demons um, and uh, cast them out and everything. Well, when I was driving home for weeks afterwards, it smelled in my car like a dog went to the bathroom in my car. And I didn't have gas. I didn't eat anything bad. It wasn't me. But in the process of time after 20, 30 years later, I realized that that was a spirit that was attached to him was following me around and it was producing a smell. So demonic and angels, you know, the demons are just fallen angels um, that are following the devil. So everything that they were created to do, the beauty that they have, the power that they have was, it was stripped from them. So they can only deceive. And if you're, don't be afraid of demons because you have power over demons if you're a Christian. Um, and if an angel comes to take you to heaven or to visit or to do something, don't go anywhere with them unless you first ask them, if they believe that the Son of God, that Jesus is the Son of God and came to earth in the flesh. And if they say yes, then, you know, go with them, trust them. But if they disappear, most likely they were demonic because the scripture says that's how we test the spirits. So right there, if we're to test the spirits, that means that spirits visiting us, spirits uh, manifesting in our life are a normal activity of Christians. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, you can expect those things to happen, but if you don't study them, they won't happen. And here's the other thing uh, I wanted to share with you about experiences, reaping what you're sowing. If you focus on studying angels in the supernatural, you will experience it. Uh, one of the things I started studying just recently and beginning to understand is um, Karen, Kat Kerr, who goes to heaven many thousands of times, like I said earlier, and has that um, God takes her by her spirit into heaven and shows her heaven and she comes back and reports about it. And has documented everything. Anyway, um, she talks about how we will be seeing the hosts of heaven in the sky. And the angels like to be called the host. 
because they are they're warriors they were created to for us and for god uh they're ministering the word says that they're ministering spirits sent to minister to us so she talks about how the hosts of heaven will be revealed in the sky and also the word of god says that there's a cloud of witnesses in the sky and uh it says that he will come on the clouds so the more I began to study about the angels appearing in the sky, the more I began to see it. And I was so excited because not, not more than, oh, maybe a week ago, I was praying, Lord, open my eyes so I can see into the spirit realm more, so I can see the host of heaven around me uh, in the sky. Because when you can see... Um, you, it just, it's, I don't know if you want to say if it built your faith, but when you see angels and when you see into the supernatural realm, the battle becomes more victorious. I have so many stories to tell you. I don't want to get too sidetracked to what I'm supposed to be talking about. But so I focus on seeing and asking God to show me angels hiding in the sky because um, our camouflage that we wear that matches the trees are like the angels. The angels wear a camouflage of clouds. The angels camouflage themselves to see what the enemy is doing in our lives and how to protect us. They, they hide in the sky to see what's going on. So they're camouflaged in the sky. So I said, Lord, show me. Well, the first thing I did was I was driving an hour and a half to visit my daughter. And excuse me, I noticed this beautiful sunrise and there was just something about it and I one thing I noticed about seeing angels manifesting in the sky is there's a pattern there's always something that will attract you to it there'll, there'll be a some kind of a pattern like you'll see two dots and okay those are probably eyes or two ears or you'll, you'll see some kind of a pattern that's unique like clouds don't usually curve in a circle so if you see a circle get your camera out the other thing is about discovering and seeing angels hidden in the clouds and manifesting in the sky is um, your eye will be drawn to it. It'll be an unusual pattern. And if you take a picture and you hold it a little bit further away from you and make it smaller, you can see the whole picture better and it'll be smaller and you'll be able to see um, uh, the whole picture. You'll Instead of seeing this big thing in your face and you don't know what it is, when you hold it further away, you can distinguish, you know, figure it out better. And then turn it sideways and turn it upside down. Because angels don't always appear looking this way. Sometimes they look like this. And so that's one way to discover them. So I took a picture and it was this huge bird. Now keep in mind that everything on earth is a copy of what's in heaven. Angels don't always look like humans. Okay. Remember the angels, are seraphim and the um, I think it was a seraphim that had a uh, head of a man, a head of a lion, a head of a, a eagle, and a head of a calf. So angels look like animals. They look like giant eyeballs. They, they look crazy because God uses his creativity and has an imagination. So angels don't always look like us. So this was a giant bird, and it was absolutely gorgeous. You could see the, the ripple and the wings. And so that was, that was really cool. There's many types of angels. Yes. Um, and then the next thing I saw was there was a storm at my house and I took a picture of it because the clouds came down like this and were really unusual. And I always am attracted to the sky uh, since I was 13 years old and I gave my heart to God. The stars I've laid out in my hills ever since I was a baby and looked at the stars in the sky and fell in love with God, even though I didn't know Jesus. And the clouds have always fascinated me. So I always take pictures of clouds. And now I know why, because the host of heaven is hidden in them. <laughs> so, um, in fact, I'm writing a picture book about all the pictures that God has given me of the host of heaven in the skies. Uh, anyway, um, so that was the second one. And then, uh, I got, uh, I took a picture of the live feed of the satellite above the earth that it was on for like five hours. And I took, just snapped a snapshot and said, this reminds me of the host of heaven because it showed the clouds over earth. And one of my friends found a face and I, I looked at it and I go, wow, there's a face and an animal, an angel, animal, angels have pets too, just like us. I know that's weird. Get out of your box. Um, God created it all. Anyway, there was, there was 
an angel. You could clearly see the face. And right aside of it was, I don't know, a, a, some kind of animal. Or it might have been a face because uh, when angels, when you see them in heaven, they there's no time and space, so they like fit into each other. So here might be a dog, and then here might be a cat, and then here might be a fish, or, or what appears to be a fish. So they, So when you see one angel's face here, you could be seeing part of another angel. So you have to really look and... and um, Ask the Holy Spirit to show you the angels in the sky, and uh, you will have more of that. Now, I wanted to share with you about some of the demons that I saw, and the power we have over them, and how it's kind of cool to see demons, because you know who you're fighting. You know, and let me explain what I mean. I'm an author, a best-selling author. I have 36 books out there. I'm an ordained minister. I've been saved about 34 years. I walk in the Spirit, and, you know, I all... this big stuff you know um and here i am getting sick okay so this is the stuff the devil's telling you oh you're this and oh you're that and look at you you're sick you can't get healed you know how he does that to especially people in leadership you know we're all everybody's all the same it's just we have different calling different missions no one is better no one is more important we just are walking different walks and and have gotten there in different ways and we're all different so uh, <laughs> so I was sick for about the second time. I, I never get colds. I, I hardly ever get sick. And I was sick. And usually when I'm sick, the devil will pile something else on me on top of me so that he can condemn me and make me feel bad about it. <clears throat> so I was really sick. And I was saying, God, what am I missing? What am I doing wrong? I praise. I played the blood. I cast out. I told demons to go. I did this and I did this. And nothing worked. I was still having physical symptoms. Now, just because you have physical symptoms doesn't mean it's not working. Remember, when a seed grows, it grows down first before it comes up, before it has the flower or the fruit. Okay, so I was battling this question that most Christians ask, why? And if you really get more spiritual, you really get into the Word and you know the Word, you don't ask why. You say, what am I missing? What do I need to do? So I was asking that and all of a sudden, this is so cool, a, de a demon put its head like this like a deer mounted on a wall put his head in through the wall and like a deer's head mounted on the wall and was staring at me and soon as I saw that I got really excited because now I knew what was going on I could see my enemy and sometimes when you can see your enemy it's easier to fight because you know how to fight that enemy. So let me tell you what this demon looked like. Um, this particular demon that I saw looked like a goat. It was a goat's head, it was real raggedy and ugly looking and stuff. And so I was excited. So I got my nose, my hair stood up on the, <laughs> every hair on my body stood straight up. You know, you can feel the demonic. But let me warn you something. When angels are around, your body reacts the same way. Hair stands on end. You feel a little bit fearful, and I've learned never to assume that the way I'm feeling about something is demonic, because your body reacts to angels the same way till you get used to them. When they're near you, it's like, <gasps> okay, so don't say, I rebuke you in Jesus' name, you know, fine, just listen to the Holy Spirit. So I got my nose up in front of this demon that was on my wall. And I nose to nose and I said, in Jesus name, I command you to go. You get out of here. You will not harass me anymore. I take authority over you and you are not allowed to make me sick, to harass me or condemn me. Go in Jesus name. Then I remembered something um, that um, Smith, w Smith Wigglesworth said um, that he said that a um, that Satan had come and moved his bed across the room. And then he said get out of here then he said no come back here and move my bed back so i said wait a minute demon come back here now everything you stole from me in this time you go and get it and you bring it back to me you restore it to me in jesus name so yeah that was so cool um so that was one experience that i had with a demonic realm and let me just tell you one more about the demonic realm and then i want to talk about how we have power over them this is kind of funny i was going to a church at the uh I was going to a church that was on TV and I worked the altars 
Uh, that means I cover the people that are um, slain in the spirit. Sometimes I catch and I hate to catch. Um, sometimes I catch and I pray for them. I walk with the minister, pray with the minister, get the minister water. I read her body language. I listen to the Holy Spirit, what the ministering person needs and what the people being slayed. I pray with them uh, when they're on the floor or whatever. Uh, um, so I was doing that. Uh, Oh, this is the wrong story. But anyway, I'll tell that story. Um, this is not about the mic. This is about the power of um, the anointing in cloths. Um, and we would cover with blue cloths. Remind me to tell you the story, the other story I was getting at. We cover with the blue cloths. So um, one day, um, one of the other altar workers uh, said, hey, Robin, catch. And they took the blue cloth and they threw it to me. And when I went to catch it, it hit me. It picked me up and but took me about four feet. And threw me back against the wall. So ever since that, and then I went into the, you know, the shaking, and which is like God's power is like electricity going through you. It's so powerful. It makes you shake. It makes you fall. It's heavy. And anyway, ever since that time, they would throw cloths at me on purpose to watch me go crazy because there was so much anointing and power in those cloths. But the other story that was um, about the spirit of gossip. Um, I work in the altars and stuff, and part of my job was to put water up on the stage for the ministers. And so the curtains had opened, and um, the cameras had started, and I didn't put the water up there, and I knew that they would be thirsty. So I walked across the stage, put the water there, and walked off. Well, it goes on TV, and there I am walking across the stage in the beginning of the opening of the TV show. I'm putting water on the stage. Didn't think nothing of it. It was a little awkward because I don't like walking on the stage unless I'm performing as a ventriloquist, a comedian, or a speaker, or preaching. That's the only time I like to be on the stage, and I absolutely love it. Uh, but So I had done that, and one of the ladies who was in the choir came up to me, and she says, Hey, you shouldn't have done that. You do not walk on the stage after the curtains open. And she said it nice, but I got offended. And let me tell you, one of the things that you do not want to do is be offended at anybody. I have been offended. I have discovered so many times when I get offended, that is such a quick door to open for the enemy. And I can tell you more than anything else in my life, any kind of offense opens the door to the enemy. So you do not want to be offended. And they are stupid. They are legalistic. They will take advantage of it, even though it's illegal for them to do anything to you. Anyway, so I had done that, and so I went and told a fellow worker, and I said, hey, listen, does this person have the right to tell me to do that? Is she my boss, or would it be the boss that would tell me not to do that? And so I got offended and got my feelings hurt. Well, that opened the door to the spirit of gossip, and I was simply sharing with another person. Now, let me tell you about the spirit of gossip. Gossip is anything you say about anyone that makes them look less in someone else's eyes. That's what gossip is. And the spirit of gossip will really attach itself to you and harass you if you do that. So don't say anything about anyone that makes someone else look less in their eyes. Doesn't matter if it's true. If it makes them see, just pray about, just say, Father, I pray about this. Don't talk to anybody about it. Okay, so I get home. I told my husband. Okay, right after I told my husband, I had this vision. I saw these two... Um, they look like penguins. They look like penguins standing next to each other like this. And they had really long beaks. And when they opened their mouth, they had teeth in it like um, like opossums do when they hiss at you. They had those little tiny teeth. Well, they go, they whisper in each other's ear at the same time. And they go, psh, 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 psh. And then they go, ha, 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 like that. And they had they didn't have feathers. They had curly black and white hair that was matted and dirty and all ugly looking. And they would whisper in each other's ears and they'd hold their beaks straight up in there and laugh. And I said, what in the world is that? And God said, that is a spirit of gossip. I said, wow, I'm not going to gossip no more. And to me, that wasn't gossip, but to the legalistic devil, it was. So that was a spirit. That was a uh, experience in the demonic realm. So don't get offended because that opens the door to the demonic. Um, and don't get, don't get into unforgiveness because that keeps you under the control of the person that hurt you. So you want to, you want to, um, the more you fall in love with Jesus, the more you're not going to want to do anything that, uh, 
causes your heart to get condemned, causes the devil to come in and condemn you, make you feel guilty and ashamed. So you feel you don't have power to work. Um, so um, you don't hear God's voice because you're feeling condemned and the devil's going. So you can't hear God. It's not that God ever separates himself from you when you sin. It's that the devil steps in between you and, and starts doing this. So you can't hear and see God and your heart feels condemned. So that's so important. You know, when you fall in love with Jesus, just like your spouse, you don't want to do anything uh, to hurt their feelings. You, you don't want to do anything that um, causes you to not get close to them. But remember, the Holy Spirit is always in you. He's in you when you go to the bar. He's in, when, in you when you smoke a joint. He's in, when, in you when you have sex with the other person. Just think of that. That's not your partner, your spouse, your legal spouse. And he's there no matter what trash you're doing, because he's trying to get you and show you out of the situation, to stop the situation, to guide you and lead you and direct you. So follow his leading and follow his leading when it comes to the supernatural, because if you follow the leading of, um, of an angel that is a demon, you're getting into new age, you're getting into the occult, you're getting into very dangerous um, territory. Okay, and you don't want to get into that stuff. You don't want to. You don't want to get into uh, tarot card reading or astrology. Uh, astrology, no. You know where you look at the signs and stars, and you say, "Oh, uh, you're a Virgo or you're a Taurus," and and this sign says this. You don't want to get into that stuff. You don't want to get into New Age stuff. Um, uh, but if you have gotten into that stuff, just re renounce it. Like Cat Kerr says, she gives you prayers to say to renounce it. Get onto her page. Kat Kerr, K-A-T, and last name K-E-R-R, -R, and she'll give you um, ways uh, to loosen that stuff off of you. But anyway, so I wanted to share with you some of my experiences uh, about seeing the angels in the sky and encourage you. This is intended to be a supernatural relationship. Being a Christian is not about being good. Being a Christian is about a relationship. And because of that relationship, and because of the goodness of God... You're being changed. Somebody is calling me. I forgot to turn my phone off. Okay, so because of that relationship with Jesus, because of that relationship, you will be changed. And remember, God loves you. He's always with you. And the supernatural is natural. It's all about a relationship. I wanted to tell you about two of my books. One of them is Just Revised. And it's called 80 Facts about 80 Facts and Truths About Angel with Kat Kerr's... Uh, interview that she gave me about angels, the questions that I asked her and how she answered them. It also has some of my supernatural, really awesome experience. Well, I think, I don't know if it has some of my experiences in there or not. I think it does. And then the other book is, um, raising the dead, healing the sick, supernatural, raising the dead angels, supernatural wine and other normal Christian activity experiences. And they're both, you can get them on Amazon as a Kindle book or a print book. And the, the second one I mentioned, Raising the Dead, Supernatural One, Angels and Other Normal. I don't know what, just type Robin Bream and it'll come up. Um, that one has all my supernatural encounters uh, uh, that I had up to that date. Uh, really fun, awesome stuff. And one thing I found out is the more you read about other people's experiences, the more experiences you'll have because your eyes will be open and you'll be out of the box of what religion teaches Christianity is you'll get out of the box and you'll experience more so it, it it's a matter um, is it on your Facebook um, if you just type Robin Bremer B-R-E-M-E-R -E -E on the internet I'm like the first 16 pages I do lots of videos I'm out there so you can find any of my stuff just by typing my name or going to my website dot net but it's on Amazon Amazon.com and then type in Robin Bremer and you can you can find it so anyway, um, those two books have lots of my experiences in. There's lots of, uh, like one of my friends, Praying Medic. He has some really good books out there. Kat Kerr has some really good books out there. Um, uh, Patricia King has some awesome books about angels out there. Um, in fact, I learned a lot of my information from Patricia King. Um, there's a, uh, if you go to my website, I think I have a list of some, some people that I, I like. Um, that will give you some more information, but expect it. It's normal to see angels in the sky. It's normal to experience the supernatural. Oh, I want to tell you one more thing. For the first time the other day, I was going for my prayer walk in the morning. 
and I experienced for the first time, this is so cool, taste in the spirit realm. I was walking and all of a sudden in my mouth, it was, I was going, hmm. And I was tasting in the spirit realm. It was so cool. And I knew it was something I really liked and it was something really familiar, but I couldn't put my finger on it. So for about maybe 15 seconds, I could, I could taste this and I was trying to figure out what it was. And it's really cool. And I've seen in the spirit realm, which is really cool too. I love seeing, I, um, have heard you can say you heard in the spirit realm because you hear the supernatural or you hear the holy spirit um and and definitely feeling the supernatural because when the spirits or demonic is near you you know it's like your hair stands on end your body kind of feels it um anyway so <laughs> my name is robin bremer dot net is my website i talk a lot about the supernatural walking in power you know you just don't want to see in the supernatural the reason to see in the supernatural is because you're a spirit being and you have power and authority over all the power of the enemy so the purpose of seeing in the supernatural is to speak to the angels tell them what to do according to the word of god the word of god says that everything i set my hands to do prospers angels go out bring in those authors that i need to publish their books to promote them angels go out according to the word of god i prosper so angels you know causes rain to stop so i'm safe that you go before me and protect me in all my ways this rain is dangerous angels causes rain to stop rain i command you to stop in jesus name till i get home that's how you talk to the weather that's commanding prayer that's another book i have called don't just sit there do something uh, commanding prayer and supernatural answers something like that i have so many books 36 and growing anyway um <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. You're awesome, too. I love you guys. Uh, so get some of those books. I give away a lot of free stuff every month. And if you're on Kindle Unlimited, you pay $10 a month. All my books are Kindle. Uh, not, yeah, Kindle Unlimited. You get all my books free if you're uh, uh, one of those people that do that. Anyway, robinbremer.net. And I hope to talk to you soon. If you have questions, write them down. If you have, I mean, hey, share this with your social media friends. Um Give, I, I don't, I'm not argumentative. I'm not trying to prove anything to anyone. I share what God teaches me. If you don't like it, you can go somewhere else. Uh, you don't have to argue with me. And if you want me to show you something because you are interested, that's great. But if you want me to prove a point to you that I'm wrong and you're right, forget it. Don't waste my time. <laughs> um, so share it with your social media, with your friends and stuff. And uh, Get some of the books, get them, get them free if you can. Check out my website, robinbremer.net, and have a blessed day. I just so love talking to you guys. It is so much fun. So, and I like studio in the car. It makes me look good. <laughs> so have a blessed day. We'll talk to you later.